you take a finite set, okay, and uh, y, which is outside of this finite set, such that uh, y and y bar doesn't meet this finite set, uh, then uh, there is a polynomial defined over R. So think about a, uh, as a polynomial from CM to C, uh, such that uh, uh, Q on F close to zero, Q and Y close to one. Okay, I think this is the simplest you can get uh, if you want to ap approximate something, uh, a polynomial. So it's just, uh, I mean, so the proof, uh, first you re reduce this, the case when M equal to one by, you have a bunch of finite limited points uh, and then a point which is away from this finite limit points and the conjugate is away. All I want is some polynomial which is close to zero at this finite limit points, close to one. So by pro generic projections, I can uh, assume m is equal to one. So by generic projection, so I have a CM project into C. Uh, C. We can, uh, we, we can reduce to the case n equal to 1. So you project this in some uh, C and uh, such that, I mean, you find this polynomial in here, Q, and generic projection, and C, you find this. Of course, gen uh, because the generic projection, distinct point will go to distinct points and then you can you preserve this property and projection so it's very simple so you have to uh, you have to do this in the plane uh, in the plane so you have a bunch of points uh, in there uh, so this is f Call this uh, PJs. This point, like P1, P1, P2, PJ. This points, and then you have this point Y, uh, Y in here, and then you also have I'm going to call this Y, Y bar. All I want is a polynomial, complex polynomial, close to zero in here, close to one in here. I guess uh, you do the simplest possible thing. You let z, z minus alpha j square beta j square. As you can see that uh, this at pj equal to zero because uh, the pj has coordinates alpha j beta j. And so when you take alpha j from it, you take i times pj square and the minus this, they will be, so this is zero. So you, you, you just take your polynomial. I mean, you can uh, make this uh, approximation C0 or CK if you like, I should mention. So then uh, the, the thing you use is just to take the products of these things. Uh, okay, now I uh, construct a complex polynomial, which is zero at every point. I still have to make it close to 1 at y. But I want this approximation close to a CK approximation. So I take this uh, k plus 1 power. Okay. So only problem is uh, sigma uh, uh, y may not be, I mean, see, sigma y is 0, then say y will be one of these points. So it's, this is not 0 point. So write this, uh, this thing as alpha. So let 
alpha plus uh, j beta. And then you uh, then it one minus let's see this thing uh, when uh, z is equal to y, this will be 1, it will be 0. Uh, I think something is not working well. Let me uh, check something. <coughs> Yeah, this is Q of Y, Q and Y is uh, 1, clearly, that 1 is 0. And then I, also, I should also have, uh, uh, what should I do? I should uh, mix them together. So I found a polynomial Y, uh, a complex polynomial, which is 1 on Y, and 0 in all these points. I need to add them some way. Sigma, how about sigma z minus this. Zero in here, zero in there. Something is not working. It is supposed to be close to trivial. I have to uh, check my book. I think I have it somehow, this is, easy. This is enough. Yeah, yeah, I think it's enough. Uh, this does the job because if Z is, uh, if Z is one of these points, uh, this part goes to zero, okay? And then uh, this is zero, one minus one, zero. And if, if z is uh, y, uh, this is just, uh, this is 0 now. Uh, this uh, alpha y is alpha plus j beta, and this minus beta squared, this 0 is 1 in there. So, yeah, so I did this carefully because uh, Raimondo tells me do some elementary stuff sometimes. So this is elementary. And then, uh, Any questions on this? So you have finite limit points and that two points like this you can do that. So now uh, here's, there's a proposition I mentioned last time. I mean, here's a, here's a thing. These are complex numbers and then complex numbers are just CN, CM, CN, CN, CM. If you have a polynomial, <laughs> Why taking this to this? A smooth function taking this to that. I can approximate by, the, by this polynomial. If I just approximate this part by polynomial and view this as complex polynomial. Just uh, I approximate it near this, this, near this line. The, po the point is I need to approximate in some other set. Okay? Then it becomes very difficult. If you have a smooth function of some subset of CN, it's very hard to find polynomial like this. But some cases, the cases I mentioned last, the last time, it works. So let 
Peter. The polynomial defined over polynomial defined over R. Okay, and then uh, there is. Uh, I think I have M M my notes. So this is R N, and I have theta inverse of R N. Here, and then you take a compact set sitting in here. Uh, I will uh, take a function. Uh, defined on there, approximate that by polynomial. This is not any compact subset of C uh, CM. It is the compact subset sitting, sitting in here. Like uh, example, you take a function like C, C to C, f of z is z squared plus bz plus c. These are real numbers, real numbers. Uh, theta, let's call this theta. Then theta, what's a theta inverse of R? There's an R in here. Clearly, R, uh, the real points got real points because these are real numbers. So, but the theta inverse of R, it's something bigger than real points. Is, uh, is, uh, there's real points. Also some real line like this. Uh, x equal to uh, minus, I think minus b over 2. So that's my uh, uh, t. I mean, here in this, it's not compact, just imagine make this compacting. So now uh, I'm claiming the sets like this, uh, which are not uh, real, uh, but they pretend, pretend, pretend like real. Uh, so, and it's such that T bar is equal to T. You want to take this set like this, like this one. Uh, and if the function T to C, a continuous function with F of Z bar is equal to F of Z bar. And uh, and theta restricted t is finite. So the finite to one map. So in particular, a polynomial like this always finite uh, if you uh, inverse image of finitely many points, finitely many points. But in general, it's not clear from CN to CM a polynomial map will be finite. But uh, just suppose it's finite, then, then F can be approximated uh, by polynomial h by polynomial. From CM to C, uh, such that, I mean, where, where, where this is approximated, uh, what I mean is that F restricted to T will be approximated by F. I guess this, uh, this is C0. So this is one uh, example of a polynomial, real polynomial, we can approximate complex numbers. I think the reason uh, I want to do things like this is there's a real world, there's a complex world in our imagination. So we want to make the uh, submanifolds in their uh, algebraic sets, uh, we, you know, all these things that I'm talking about. Then you, 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 you write something as an image of an algebraic set, it's not an algebraic set. Take the Zariski closure, all of a sudden things appear. Because this from imaginary world, there are these things coming and then hitting your real thing. Until you take Zariski closure, you don't see them. There are these imaginary things coming, hitting them. So I need to fix them. So this is like the imaginary things that are mapped to real part. I want to fix them. So, but there's a good imaginary thing. This is the one that comes from real, real thing. I mean, you can like, you have two kind of imaginary world. You can imagine things. This is one kind. The other kind is, uh, imagine things actually happened. Like you remember your parents, your grandparents who passed away, not exist anymore, but I remember them. T is like this. T remembers in some past, it is a real, the real things. Uh, I can go back, uh, I, I want to go back in the past, correct some behavior and come back. That's what that means. There's this, uh, 
TV show, they show every year, Christmas time in US, you know, the, like Christmas spirit, that this guy who was not behaving himself, and this uh, ghost comes, scares him, and shows him things from his past, and then he allows him to go back and adjust and come back. So this is, this, this is the good uh, imaginary things. Or like a string theory. You string theory, there's like, yesterday you came to my lecture, but you, you didn't have to. You could have gone to different lecture. It did actually happen. There's another string, another string. So these are the strings that come to here, but not the parallel things. It has nothing to do with this. This has to do with reality. Okay, enough philosophy. How can I do this? Uh, okay, let's try to make some uh, simple proof. So this is this is my CN. This is CN, and this is a po uh, this is this poly polynomial over R, and then uh, this is the real real part, Rn. Inverse, in, inverse image of T is some, it could be something like this. So this is uh, T inverse. Like this. So I claim this, claim Uh, for every x, for x, every x in Rn, there exists uh, open set containing x in sitting in Cn, such that uh, there exists a polynomial h x. CM, CM, such that a HX is very close to F restricted to theta inverse UX intersect K. I mean, K is some compact, some compact set. I think uh, I mentioned that it's T. You can just say T. Is that clear what I say? What I say, every uh, point in here, in here, you can find an open set, UX. Inverse image of this, this is a finite map. It will, it, it will have, it will have many, many, like this. So that's uh, theta inverse UX. These are these points. And then f, f is a function on t. t is, uh, just imagine this is t. This yellow piece is t. t is the yellow. I mean, it's the compact part of this yellow piece. Okay? So I mean, I have a function f from this uh, the t to c. I want to approximate that function. Is it clear what I want to do? Uh, I give a compact set like this sitting in there, and I have a function which is, is this nice property, invariant under conjugation, like this. Then uh, I can approximate, uh, I want to eventually approximate that function with a, uh, with a complex polynomial functions, function. This one? No, no, it's the last one, approximation. This one? Yeah, yeah. yeah so if I have, uh, I want to, my goal is given a, a subset of CM, smooth, 
continuous function. Uh, the, the function like this. I want to approximate this function by a polynomial map. That's all I want to do. Well, I mean, it can be C0, C1, whatever. So if, if, if T is a real num uh, numbers, real line, then uh, it's a, I can approximate function my polynomial on the reals, y Strass approximation theorem, and then view that as a complex polynomial. So there's nothing in here. If T is in R, the real part of this CM in RM. Well, like two functions approximate. C0 approximation is, is their differences less than epsilon. Uh, CR approximation means their derivatives are time, are derivatives close to epsilon. Right? Like in the sense of approximating functions. Two functions are close to each other if they absolute value difference. You, you take this one minus that, minus that one, take the absolute value you want. It close to each other. Well, yeah, yeah, so in most elementary sense, and then you can, uh, you can demand this to be CK approximation, etc. I'm not specifying it. I think first you do the C0 approximation, but the, all I have it, if T is in uh, RM, nothing to prove. Why should I say approximation? Yeah. Now I want to make it a little uh, general. Uh, T is not the RM, but T is in uh, inverse image of, of RM, RM here. Like, like in this example, I have a real line and then plus some other region. That this polynomial will send this to reals. reals. Okay? So the first stage uh, I claim for every x, I can find an open set around it such that, so inverse images of, of this open set will be many open sets like this. For each one of these, uh, uh, this uh, I can find a polynomial which approximate f. I solve my problem point-wise. I find some points uh, in, in T, uh, polynomials around those neighbors of those points approximate f. So suppose, so given this claim, we can get the conclusion. Of the, of the proposition. So, remember, uh, uh, I, I can uh, choose enough of these. Uh, so I have uh, such that these are open sets covering T. T was compact. So uh, these things, there are finitely many of them will co uh, cover T. So there exists X1, XR in uh, Rn, so that uh, T is covered by uh, this is just a compactness. So I found enough, you know, enough of these sets. Such that inverse images of these uh, uh, covered uh, T. I mean, uh, some of like, there's this one, inverse image of this, could be uh, this like this here, like this in here, etc. So the point is I can find enough of these open sets such that inverse images of this all will cover my T. So let uh, let psi i be partition of unity of one subordinate to to uh, this score. So you find a partition of unity uh, subordinate this score and and approximate. Each and uh, uh, P T I by real polynomial. Okay. 
So I have all this covered my set. Uh, finite many of these guys in here. For each, I mean, these are really uh, open sets in RN. Uh, just look, uh, get thicker. And I'm looking at the balls in a complex, uh, uh, complex space. But think of these open sets in RN. And these are smooth functions. And then you, you have uh, partition of, you, you take a partition of here to subordinate to this. So these are, you know, they, they are supports live in here, PIs. And then uh, approximates PI, uh, each PI by PI, by polynomials. You do, you do this in uh, reals, in reals. But this, I can consider this real polynomials, complex polynomial. I'm just in the reals. So, so I have this uh, PIs. These are defined over real. Is this clear, this thing? And these are open sets in the uh, real RN. And then I, I just find polynomials uh, approximate the PIs. And I view them as complex polynomials. And then, uh, then that, then that H. So this, uh, this guy, I'm telling you what this is. This is just PI theta z h x i z. So I find my polynomial, complex polynomial. So PIs are all these polynomials in here. So these are just composition of these are. Uh, think of these PIs are like a real, uh, complex polynomials, but they, in fact they are real polynomials. And then. Uh, if this uh, pi, if pi is pi is like t squared plus one, you consider them like z squared plus one. So you just uh, you put theta, you compose each this uh, theta uh, in here in h x i. So it's clearly from the construction you'll see this close to f of c because uh, on this each ball, each ball x i was a comp uh, approximation of f. And then theta help you to uh, you know, to take it right in here. Uh, P, pi is in, in size like one. So it's very elementary. Uh, uh, I used uh, I used this property, wonderful property, that my compact set lies in T. All I need to so I'm this finished. All I need to show you how to find H, right? Uh, this guy. How to find Can you uh, yeah, I guess okay uh, this is uh, the finding such x is exactly what I told in the beginning. If you have finitely many points, uh, you can find the polynomial. Uh, taking one in there and zero somewhere else. It's exactly how you construct this. And this may not be enough space for me. Sorry. So for each y in uh, theta inverse x and t, let gy, it's a function, constant function, y to the f by constant function. I mean, clearly, this constant function has this property, gy bar is equal to gy, because of this property of this. Uh, by uh, by previous demo, there exists polynomial such that this is uh, close to zero on. Minus y, y bar. 
and uh, closed one on y y bar y, y bar. Because this is finitely many points. So on finitely many points, I can always find the complex polynomial. Uh, I mean, this okay, clearly uh, uh, this will depend on y for each y in here. Uh, I find the polynomial in this finitely many points close to zero, in these points close to one, and then these points are different from these points. So then that. That's all this. So this, this is your polynomial. So for each y I pick in here, I constructed a, a, a polynomial like this. I take this point, I take inverse images of this, there are many points, and these are uh, close to zero in here. And then uh, the point I chose, uh, and my, origin, my original point is close to one. These are constant functions. I'm just anyway, so this uh, you can discover this yourself. Uh, uh, getting this one, uh, this is the end of it. So now I go back to uh, remind you what I, why I needed this. So what did we have last time? We have a smooth manifold, closed smooth. A diffeomorphism, diffeomorphism H, diffeomorphism to non-singular algebraic set Z, sitting in. Hold on, let me put it farther away. And this has a complexification. It's an unsimilar algebraic set. In fact, I first found a compound of an unsimilar algebraic set, but then I told you a trick how to turn it into an unsimilar algebraic set. And that's uh, some, this is some large, the uh, large RM. It has complexification. And then uh, now I take uh, the smooth manifold in question is a smooth manifold I have sitting inside of Euclidean space. That's that include, there's this inclusion. Uh, uh, the, so rho z. That's, uh, this is sitting inside of RF. This is the image of this. Uh, I can uh, uh, find a diffeomorphism in a polynomial map in here, row of polynomial, polynomial map in here. And uh, I want to make this rho z image of polynomial map is a component, non-singular points of an algebraic set on the nose. In, if I just take the Zariski closure of this, all this sheet will intersect this, I'm in trouble. Uh, so. This is a polynomial map, this. And then there's also this, this will set rho c, zc. So there's, there's this map, complexification map, rho c. I called this y last time. And that this is sitting in cn.
and then I uh, and the last time I showed you how to make how to make finite map. In the beginning, I didn't have anything. I have embedding. I have a diffeomorphism to compound of algebra X, which I can make it now. So we want to do it, and I have a map like this. And then this map is a polynomial, polynomial over reals, and all, it immediately it has complexification. And I said, if I get this thing to be finite, and then also get this property, then I can do everything. If I, if you map uh, this to here and pull back, so that means you map by uh, row C, uh, the C, and then pull the inverse image. It can have complex points. That means you prevented any complex points like this. If you have this in this finite map, then you can finish the argument, I said. So we, I told you how to do this, a finite map by projection, generic projection. So now I'm assuming this situation. So my goal is to make a uh, I mean, I think last time I called this like psi. Goal is psi inverse psi z. z uh, manipulate So I need to, it's very hard to manipulate complex uh, function, so I will manipulate this by using this uh, lemmas I proved right now. Is that clear what I'm going to, towards? Uh, this, this much we had last time, and then now I want to do this. What I'm going to do is you, in another generic projection, uh, from here to uh, say L, L is like a V curve, V is a vector in, in RN. V is a vector in RN. You will be generically projected. And write uh, this map, uh, call this pi, yeah, you can project it in L. plus clearly I can write it like this, uh, this map. This map is sitting in CN, image sitting in CN. I can decompose as a piece of it that lies in the hyperplane. Piece of it is lies in here. I, I wrote it like this. So the picture is something like this. So always remember, this was a uh, smooth manifold. This is a non-singular variety. This is the image I want to make it, component of a non-singular point of an algebraic set in here. This is the one uh, that I don't know what it is. Uh, but it is, uh, this goes into like an like open set of this. I want to, to turn into smooth point of a non-singular algebraic set. So the picture is like the Z. I have it Z here, and then this is a, then the complexification ZC, this, pic this picture. And I have some a map uh, rho C, and rho C was, is mapping into CN. So I write it, this is like the RF. I uh, take a per perpendicular direction, some vector in the R R RF. It is like this. But I want to think of it as a uh, piper plane in CN. So it, it will look like, it will look like this. It's my L. Okay. Uh, this is a closed, closed smooth manifold, so this is a compact, nice 
smooth manifold. So the image, image will look like this. This is a nice compact in, uh, object in here. And now when you project this thing, uh, when you project into here, this will project in some place like this. So this is this, this, this the compact neighborhood. So T is, uh, and I look at the inverse image of this, this thing. And, uh, I need some color. Like this. Take the inverse image. Take the inverse image of this. This thing is, uh, call this T. So this thing is uh, pi rho c inverse image of a compact set. I take a little compact set in here, uh, take the inverse image of uh, rho, rho c. I mean, rho c is mapping in here, rho, rho c mapping in here, but then I project into pi in there. So I call this t. This is my t here. So this is a this thing is a complex immersion. I mean, this is a uh, this is an embedding. So this thing is uh, uh, Jacobian is uh, non-zero. Uh, so, so, so that complex Jacobian is non-zero. So it's immersion. It's immersion. Complex immersion. Near near z. So near z in here, yeah, it's a com complex immersion here. In, in there, okay. So that uh, rho c, uh, take a little neighborhood in here. Take a little neighborhood. Rho c in u is complex immersion. So this this map taking uh, real points to real points, complex points to real complex points in the little tubular neighborhood, because it's a uh, polynomial map defined over R. Okay, and that rho c u minus c. So in the, uh, this is the u minus c in complement has no real points. So this this is clear this much. So in the little uh, tubular neighborhood of it, these are uh, non-real points. It goes to non-real points. This goes to real points in, in the middle. Okay. Uh, take a uh, let you uh, uh, take a u prime to be a smaller neighborhood like this. U prime smaller neighborhood. Okay. Let, uh, uh, let alpha be uh, a function t, 0, 1. t is this thing. I want a uh, function such that when t intersects a smaller open set, it is 0 in here, outside of big open sets 1. It's very simple. So uh, alpha u prime intersect t is equal to 0. u prime is this much, is it this much is u prime. And alpha t minus u in the complement of this is, is, is 1. And alpha z is equal to alpha z bar. So uh, you define a uh, uh, function and then use the previous proposition to approximate by complex polynomial. So you approximate. Uh, GC C by previous
And then, okay, so get little technique on that. B. Is, uh, is T a compact set? Anyone can answer me? Procedures. T was uh, the inverse image, this inverse image of this compact set. But remember, this was proper. I did previous lecture. I made this proper. And uh, uh, since this proper, this is proper. So inverse image of compact sets under proper sets compact. So therefore, therefore it's compact. <laughs> it is compact. Compact. Since rho c is proper. You might say that, wait a minute, rho c is proper. Pi, why is pi proper? Remember, I took a, a, a generic projection. A generic projection, you can always take a generic projection from algebraic sets, some hyperplane such that it will proper. This is the theorem in algebraic geometry I'm using all the time. So this, uh, this, this proper and pi is proper. Pi restricted to ZC is proper. So this is compact. So so that would be compact. So, so uh, this is how you use the previous proposition. I have a compact set and then you have, you know, a function like this, real valued function in this case, uh, and then you approximate this by a polynomial. And because these are all finite, these, these are finite. In fact, this, uh, this was finite, finite, in fact, finite. This is how I got proper. It was finite before a finite when you do generic projection. So much better than proper. So B is maximum Z and T. Okay. So then let So my goal was perturb this function such that it will have that property. Phi inverse of phi of z will be z. <laughs> so I'm per per perturbing this function uh, just by 2b plus 2 alpha prime z times z. So alpha prime is just a, a complex function. I, mean, the, 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 I approximate this by complex polynomial. So. So I'm done. So I claim this does the job. It's hard to believe this function has that property. So, I mean, uh, let me write two different ways. You can write, you can project this into pi rho c z. And there's a le leftover piece. I, it is a, I, I wrote it two different ways. I just broke this in. I broke it in like this. In here. Uh, let's go step by step. I need this function to be proper and also have this property, phi inverse phi z is equal to z. Well, I mean, if you project this uh, in here, I mean, this is perpendicular to v. You, uh, you just get this one. So therefore, proper. Because when you project this into that plane, hyperplane, this part goes away. It is just like projection of this. I just discussed this guy was proper, composition of two finite maps. So when you project it, it's proper itself is proper, clearly. So this is uh, phi, phi proper. And then the other property is uh, phi is some close to so C1 close to rho C on, on U or U prime doesn't matter. It's in here. Because approximation took place in here. So now the big claim is uh, 
uh, if you take uh, C inverse, C is equal to Z. If you can prove this, you are finished from discussion of last time. Any questions? If you uh, if you ask an elementary lecture, then it gets technical. <laughs> but you can go line by line, check this. Uh, and I also look at Suppose you see, uh, suppose this is not the case. So I mean, this guy clearly, uh, this is clear, right? I mean, if you map it phi z and uh, you pull back, that thing will contain z, right? If phi is, uh, if phi is an approximation of this defined on c z. So. Show that. Show that, uh, that you cannot find a point in here which is not in here. Show that if z is in z, using c z times z, we cannot have So if it's not the case, I will have some point whose phi will map to phi of some point in here. So you show that this cannot happen. Z is some point in here. U is some point uh, here. Phi is approximation. You cannot have these two points mapping into the uh, same point in here. I think the argument is you first prove that this point has to lie in here. In T. Then you prove that, in fact, that point has to lie in Z. So what's the easiest way to see? Uh, since Pi rho c u is equal to pi phi u. Because phi u was, uh, I mean, I think this room deserves more blackboards, in my opinion. It's a beautiful room, large room. We need, we need some more blackboards. Tell the administrator. So uh, this is true because, uh, I mean, I have to always uh, remind you what is phi. Phi was. Phi was in here, phi, z was rho c, perturbation of this. Here. And you project into pi, uh, you get uh, this is equal to this thing. But I'm assuming uh, I'm assuming this is a pi of field of z. So this assumption is, if you have this thing, and z is in here, u has to be in, in this part. So, but this thing is equal to uh, pi of rho c of z. And same thing, same reason this is equal to this, this is equal to this one. Okay, so, Pi rho of z. Since v is in the real part, this function is just the same as this function. Just we use uh, the complex point of view. But this was in k. This was in k. This part was in k. And you project in rho z. This is rho z projecting here. This, this is in k. So therefore, this guy u. So therefore. U is uh, U belongs to inverse image of uh, K. 
So this u is in the pi rho c inverse image of k. And this was, what was this? This was a name. This was called t. So I proved my first stage. If this goes to a real piece, this goes to a real piece, this has to lie on t. This guy, t. Is it clear so far? Now I want to prove if it lies in T, it must lie in Z. Any questions? I mean, I claim it can't lie it can't lie uh, I mean it can't lie in here because remember this function takes uh, uh, this immersion in here here it will take non-real points to non-real points this is a real point it's going to real point so you cannot be in here you cannot be in here so you can either be here or outside if u is in here, it will be non-real point. Because immersion takes non-real points, non-real points. Uh, let me just postpone the fact that uh, it, it can be in here. So let me show that uh, rho u cannot be. Proving. You cannot be. I mean, T minus U either. I mean, you cannot be in here. You cannot, I mean, uh, U's are uh, on the point. I know the U has to be on T. So it cannot be far away point either. So how do you show this? Well, you, sh you show like this, phi of U. I have to uh, remind you, yourself and myself what is phi of u, and uh, I mean, again, reminding you, rho c of z is a pi rho c of u plus rho c of z, v and v, and uh, phi of z, perturbing this little bit, uh, rho c plus 2b plus 2 alpha prime z of b. So therefore, phi, phi of z minus pi, I mean, I, I, you can also break this in pieces, pi rho c of z plus this piece, so I put these things together, rho c of z v v plus 2v plus 2 alpha prime z of v. So P of C minus pi rho pi rho C U, you just put this on the other side, uh, is approximately equal to. Now remember this guy outside of this U, it was uh, close to one. So if I take this minus this, this is close to this guy. So I will just put in uh, put that thing in here. Rho C of U V plus 2B plus 2B. So Rho is, uh, is close to this. At the same time, Psi of U minus Pi Rho C of uh, U is equal to, because this was equal to Phi of Z.
saying here. Uh, I mean, this is just equal to this. It's equal to this. Uh, and this is uh, close to. Uh, Because I'm assuming that they are equal. So and they are they are equal. And so I'm using this formula. And then uh, this will conclude the proof. Therefore, uh, this is bigger than this minus this absolute value, bigger than two e plus one minus rho z rho c u v. But this maximum of this was remember maximum of this was b. So this is a 2b plus 2 minus b, the d plus 1. So this maximum of this was, maximum of this was b. So this one, I estimated this one, I estimate this one, and this is uh, equal to this one in the u. So this is a unit vector, so let's say, The maximum of this was b. You get a contradiction, b greater than b plus 1. I mean, the upshot is uh, you, you rig this uh, approximation such that you get a contradiction in here. And I, I think I will skip the part that this can't be this. So it can't be here. You, you cannot be far away where uh, alpha prime is close to 1. It cannot be here. It cannot be in here. It's because if it is in here, uh, in the near, uh, that means near real parts, and, uh, but not on the real parts. This will be imaginary piece. Uh, yeah, this will, be, this will be imaginary piece. This will be close to, uh, 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 and I know this is imaginary piece, this imaginary piece, but this is close to uh, real. So it, it, you just, uh, you just uh, rule out it can't be here by the, by the formula you put. At least you got the idea. I mean, by just manipulating uh, this uh, projection, you can get uh, you can get you can get this property. This was the main meat of that. Uh, the discussion was you have the triangle, uh, the smooth manifold mapping the non-singular algebraic variety. You see, you look at the image of this. If this map has that property, then the image will be the whole component non-singular points of an algebraic set. Are there any questions? So I can move. So this one requires you go back and look at the papers uh, or the book. Uh, If there are no questions, and I want to prove the following theorem. So this is the case. I have a, a, 
a subset of Euclidean space, which is image of a non-singular algebraic set. When, once I take a Zariski closure, I'm preventing new things coming, hitting it by going back in time and then uh, doing some approximation to this map mapping. But uh, you cannot always do this. Uh, uh, this is the example. What's a transcendental number? A number whose uh, root of a polynomial, a huge polynomial, complex, complex polynomial. You can make a submanifold to be transcendental, uh, uh, which is not a, a real part of a complex variety. Okay, so so V is a non-singular algebraic set sitting inside of, say, RPN. And then uh, this is a complexification. CPN. Uh, so there exists this, so that, so that uh, VC, uh, non-singular, cannot be so I would like to demonstrate to you I mean uh, I mean uh, finding an algebraic set if I if you give me an algebraic set I can easily find uh, prove that it cannot be real part of a complex algebraic set because algebraic sets are very uh, rigid objects but if I give you the uh, permission to move this algebraic set smoothly, move, t t take this as a smooth manifold, you move the algebraic set, and then prove this can never be real part of a non-signal complex algebraic set, it's much harder problem. So I, those are the ones I call uh, transcendental manifolds. They exist. So you can find smooth manifolds. You can never make a non-signal algebraic set in here. You can make a non-signal algebraic set with this property. Uh, you can make an unsingular algebraic set, but it cannot occur as a real part of an unsingular complex algebraic set. So that means I'm not able to go, or if I have an unsingular algebraic set already, even if you give me per permission to move this smoothly, then change an unsingular structure, I'm not able to change these imaginary points to make the imaginary parts non-singular. This is kind of opposite of what I did. I went in back time and then I fixed this, this thing here. So, so for this, let me uh, put it, make it here. Huh? Yes, yes. So you are also asking that PC is Pardon? You are also asking that PC is one Yeah, so the, the, there exists this, so that we cannot be uh, weak we can be singular. Well, I mean, how should I say? There exists. So there exists. So let me write my words. There is, there exists a smooth manifold. In RPN. Which can be. Which can be. Isotope. to a non-singular algebraic subset of RPN. But M can never be isotoped to real parts, real part of a non-singular complex algebraic set. Is it clear what it's saying? So those that put 
I call this transcendental in the strongest sense possible. I mean, transcend, transcendental number is a number you cannot be. I mean, here I give you, because if I make transcendental definition of transcendental by fixing a real algebraic structure, this too much cheating, because our smooth manifolds can be moved around. I, I want to call smooth manifold transcendental. That is, uh, uh, I think this needs to be investigated. That's, uh, I'll tell you uh, construction of this. This Lefce hyperplane theorem says that if you have a real, this is a uh, uh, sub-variety, complex non-singular, complex animation sub -variety. Given such a thing, I mean, it is a real part two. I guess, I mean, this is, uh, I will use this part, uh, but not in the left just hyperplane theorem. That uh, it says that then HI CPN is, uh, I, and is uh, inclusion, call this I. This is an isomorphism for all i less than 2n minus n. So if you have a complex n-dimensional complex projective variety in the CPN, the cohomology group should be isomorphism i less than 2n minus 2, like this. Okay, so so you look at the literature. So pick it exists by P10 inside inside of uh, uh, R17. Where did I get this? I mean, there's some paper of last one. There's an orientable, uh, uh, there's an orientable example I get from Emil Thomas, basically Emil Thomas. Similar examples like this. So you pick such an uh, embedding. So you, it's a 10 dimensional manifold, you construct 11 dimensional manifold by taking RPN cross S1. S1 sits in uh, R3. I want S1 to sit in R3. So S1 will sit in R S2. And this sits in R3. So this sits inside of... This guy was sitting in R17. R17 cross R3. So R20. Which sits inside of CP, uh, RP20. So my 11 dimensional, so I have a 11 dimensional manifold, 20 uh, dimensional projective space. I claim I can move this to non-singular algebraic subset. I have, an, I mean, all we know is uh, you can move it to non-singular algebraic subset by crossing Euclidean space. But I claim you can do it on the nose in here. So, M, so M11. And the isotope for the nice algebraic sub subset. Let me uh, tell you how to prove this. So I have uh, 
I have RP10. RP10 cross S2 sitting in, uh, inside of uh, RP20. So this thing. This is a codimensional submanifold, right? In fact, uh, I can obtain this thing by uh, intersecting this. Uh, I can take a thick sausage. So these two, these two points uh, describe RT10 cross S1. Because RP10 cross S2 is a union of two things, RP10 cross D2 plus RP10 cross D2 minus, right? And then in the middle, you have RP10 cross S1. This piece, RP10 cross, this is like RP10 cross D2 plus RP10 cross D2 minus. So this is a codimension one manifold. In fact, I can find a little sausage. This is a codimension one submanifold of, uh, so Z, uh, 19. This is sausage. I take a little thick sausage uh, will intersect at a, a, a exactly this point. Well, from what we proved, this guy inside of our, uh, inside of and this sits in uh, R20 sitting in here. So first I want to make this guy algebraic. Uh, first, uh, because this, this this sits in R, R20, what do we know making a closed submanifold R20 algebraic? Well, I know how to make that thing a non-singular point of an algebraic set. So I can move this thing. I can I can move this thing. Non-singular point of algebraic set and then some other points. Right? This is what we proved. It could be non-singular points and some junk. Sitting here. So I can perturb this in here from to be proved. But this is an algebraic set in R20, not RP20. Right? To make it algebraic in RP20, what do I need to do? I need to prove this algebraic set is projectively closed, right? Projectively closed means defining equations should be overt polynomial, the highest degree terms like should be like the absolute value of x, some power. So, but I, I claim this thing is, this thing is not singular algebraic set. Because, because it is co-dimension one. And separates, and separates. So this sausage has inside and outside. You take a function in here, function here, which is plus inside and minus outside, some smooth function. You approximate this by polynomial, and then you can write this as a uh, algebraic sausage, boundary of the sausage algebraic set. But I can, since uh, so, uh, you approximate this by polynomial, I can assume the highest degree is something like this. Because I'm appro approximating smooth function by polynomial, nobody can stop me after I approximate this smooth function putting some epsilon times x to the 2d. It still approximates f, right? After you approximate this by polynomial, you just put that epsilon times x to the 2d. We a high power thing. It still approximates this. By may, uh, 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 approximating f by such a polynomial, Overt polynomial, that means projectively close, because uh, highest degree terms are like this. This guy uh, is, a pro, is a, this thing is an, not also, not only algebraic sitting here, but it's algebraic sitting there. Now the intersection is also projectively close. Itself is projectively close. Therefore, this intersection of this and that is projectively close. So I avoided this making projectively close, because projectively close means the sausage lies in the chart. 
to entirely in RPM, RP20 chart. So therefore, when you intersect this, this is lies in this chart. So this uh, algebraic variety and this one, which I use my theorem, this thing is, I made a uh, projective close algebraic set, so therefore it's an algebraic set in here. So I made this thing a singular algebraic set. So, uh, so claim can never, never occur or occur as the uh, real points of, of an unsingular complex algebraic set in CP20. Uh, so this is an algebraic set, but in UK by going CP20, we can, it can never occur like this. So this is why I'm going, this, this is going to my example. How much time do I have? Five minutes. Five minutes. Okay, so this follows from some wonderful fact. So the fact is this: if you have, a, if you have a, a now singular algebraic set inside of this V C, and this is real part of V, and then a real part of this is V here. So this is dimension of this is n, real dimension of n, so complex dimension is a 2n. Okay? You can consider a fundamental class of this in here. So suppose co-dimension is a, suppose co-dimension L is k in here. So the co-dimension of this is co-dimension Lc is 2k. Right? I mean, this is like a n minus k dimension, so co-dimension is k. This n minus k dimension complex algebraic set, which means co-dimension uh, 2D n 2D 2n. So the, if there's n minus k dimension, then complexify 2 n minus k dimension. So this is co-dimension k real algebraic set becomes co-dimension 2k real algebraic set. Now you consider this is a, a, a and there's an inclusion here. Okay, so this is a, a how should I say? Uh, 2n minus 2k, 2n minus 2k, uh, algebraic uh, subset of this homology. But then there's a Poincare duality. This is H, so it's a two-n dimensional space. So H 2k VC. Okay. Then you take the I star. Restrict this thing, this thing in here. And then you, you, you this fundamental class of this is a uh, homology class. You take the Poincare dual, then restrict this homology class. Take the Poincare dual of this. Yeah. Where does it go? Uh, n dimension, so this is n minus 2k in here. Maybe I should have said this. If you take n minus k dimension algebraic set in here, this fundamental class of this, 
take the inclusion in here, L minus K dimensional, algebra except in here, take the Poincare dual of this, this is uh, Uh, what's the Poincare dual of this? 2L minus M plus K. So N, uh, N plus K in here. And the Poincare dual of this is K. And you ask the question, what happens when you restrict, uh, restrict this map? So, okay, so I take, uh, this is another single algebra exit, I take the projectivization. I mean, I take the complexification of this. The, that is in, in here. I mean, L in here, LC in here, LC in here, LC is 2L, 2L minus 2K. And take the point credit all till you get 2K. Okay, so this is L, this is complexification. So this defines the N minus K dimensional cohomology. This depend, uh, defines the 2N minus 2K dimensional cohomology. And take the Poincare dual of this, take a Poincare dual of this. Yeah, there's a... Uh, When you, when you restrict, when you restrict uh, this, you get H2K D I star. Yeah, okay, so this is the whole picture. I have a complex uh, real variety, N minus K dimension, co-dimension K. Complex, uh, complexify everything, you get a 2N minus 2K dimension variety in here. The Poincare duality takes this to this one. Poincaré dual takes to this one, but now I, when I take Poincaré dual, I can restrict it this to this. So what's the relation? I star Poincaré dual when you come like this. What's the, uh, this guy Poincaré dual? It's a wonderful uh, question. I have a real variety sitting inside of real, real sub-variety of uh, real variety, complexify this pair, take the Poincare dual, restrict. How is it related to Poincare dual of this one? So the, the Poincare dual, inverse of Poincare dual is a k-dimensional, inverse of Poincare dual of this two k-dimensional. It turns out this thing is a cup product. Now from this uh, fact, we were able to write many papers out of this. <laughs> One of the consequences is proving that this, uh, this can never happen. So, I mean, this is obviously intersection of two fields, a real uh, algebraic geometry, complex algebraic geometry. The simplest thing you can think of, uh, you know, take a complex variety, take a Poincare dual, restrict, what is that related to Poincare dual of the real part? So this, this, this the fact. Once you do this, this thing, uh, then it falls uh, right off. But I mean, I, it looks like I'm out of time, so I shouldn't uh, force people to sit uh, like this. There are many applications. This is one of the applications I had in mind because it took uh, the uh, details of the proof of the, of the previous theorem took uh, lo so long, so I couldn't finish this one. So week after next week, I want to uh, talk about singular varieties. So, for instance, here's a theorem that at least in one, uh, one hour and a half explain to you the theorem very close to the manifold. 
is from the morphic to the algebraic set. This wonderful fact, I want to, to tell you the story of this. Uh, this is a very amazing story of this because you, 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 would, you would think that uh, to making something algebraic, you have to start smoothing it. See how the singularities look like. Here you are able to prove it without doing any, any of that. Every PL manifold, you know, PL manifold means there's a corners, 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 like this. You can't find an algebraic variety which is homeomorphic to this. So to do this, I need to tell you classification of algebraic varieties with isolated singularities, what are these things? And I also tell you uh, knots. If you have a high dimensional knot, cone over a knot in an algebraic variety. And which, which kind of algebraic varieties can realize which cones of the right knots? These are kind of local pictures of this. Then it develops into this one. So I maybe in one lecture I will give you the story. Uh, if you look at uh, my uh, website, this is the uh, paper in uh, IHS uh, journal. Uh, it's about 100 pages, 80, 100 pages, but idea is very simple. Once you see the idea, you know exactly what to do. Okay. <laughs>